What's going on, everyone? Badger here. Make sure to like and sub, and let's get into this. Uh, ESG, you've heard me say it. You've heard us all say it a billion times. Economic, social, governance. There's a couple of little small things in there, maybe. But either way, we use it when we're talking about the rules that are coming from the higher-up money men, basically, and the higher-up government agencies. These are the ideologies through ESG that they are pushing for one reason or another, but let's just get today. I think this is a great way of explaining what exactly ESG is, why it is so attractive to game development companies specifically, and uh, well, let's just do it. Uh, former team lead for World of Warcraft, Mark Kern, explains how ESG influences video game developers and how it will kill them, not in Minecraft, but unfortunately get there. And we've seen this thousands and thousands of people in the gaming industry fired and that's not just from making you know big games with not enough story blah 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 blah. yes that's a problem but all this esg influence is another one and here's how it happens former world of warcraft team leader mark kern recently detailed how influential esg otherwise known here as environmental social and corporate governance standards are for video game developers if you are unfamiliar with the term ESG, it is essentially a set of standards that a number of governments and financial institutions have created to determine how they will invest their money. As no, and by their money, they mean the money that you give them thinking they're going to invest in profitable uh, business ventures and instead they push these ESG. Uh, as noted by BlackRock CEO Larry Fink, the standards are used to force behaviors on companies seeking investment for their projects. Fink detailed during an appearance at the New York Times Dealbook Conference, and let's just hear him say it. It's just, it, you have to force behaviors. And if you don't force behaviors, whether it's gender or race, or just any way you wanna say the composition of your team, you're gonna be impacted. And that's not just not recruiting, it is development, as Ken said. How do you force change though? I mean. Larry, BlackRock has, has really been in the forefront of the ESG movement within, within corporate governance and a real leader, and yet change is so slow. So what is, uh, and, and Ken as well, what, what, how do you force change when it is so incremental and so gradual? Um, and according to Kim Belair of Sweet Baby Inc., you terrify your marketing team with what could happen if they don't capitulate to your demands. Um, how do you do something more radical? Have you thought about that? Has the board of American Express thought about more radical things we could do? Yeah. How do you get more radical? Diversity and inclusion? Because it has to be imbued in the culture of a firm. It has to be talked about. It has to be shown. Behaviors across the entire firm in every region have to be similar. Replace firm with pop culture society. That's why they take over everything. Because just like he just said, the firm, the small little thing, has to be reflected everywhere they look. So that's their reality. Yep. And that's why they want to come for video games. They've already come for them, all these things I'm saying. But that's why they came for video games and comics and pop culture and books and everything. So that no matter where we went, their disgusting little neo-Marxist uh, uh, beliefs and ideology is right there. There's no escape from it. And here you go. Larry Fink, the, one of the main people pushing it, one of the main people. And every citizen of the firm has to understand what is acceptable behaviors and what are unacceptable behaviors. It's groupthink, groupthink. Okay, so that's that, right? That's one of the main pushes. There's, there's many, obviously, but there you go. His own words, again, they always say it out loud because they're, they're proud of this. They think they will not only write history, but they're on the right side of it. Spoiler, they're not. Uh, and here we go. Here's the main meat of this. Uh, in an interview with Jeremy Hambly, of course, the quartering on YouTube, check out his channel if you have not talked about all this, but he had Cabrutus on, uh, the guy that made the Steam curator list. You all know about him. And he had Mark Kern. And let's go. The solution. It's Anita Sarkeesian, but actually financially profitable. Oh, it's very profitable. I mean, there's an entire industry built up. So, of course, just the guy there at the bottom is uh, Mark Kern. In the middle, of course, is Cabrutus. Around uh, DEI initiatives, consultancy, sensitivity reading has plagued novels for a long time. I have many writer friends who um, were basically edged out of their publishing houses and went independent because of uh, stuff like this. And it's it's just, it, it's a very profitable industry. It's financially motivated. And it's as old as time. Consultancy 
is a very profitable business. There are huge firms on Wall Street that do this. And it's exactly that. You create a problem, you go in, and you and you say you're going to solve it, but you actually just move the deck chairs around the Titanic because if you actually solved it, they wouldn't get rehire you. And then you have to. And the point here would be that, uh, and Nerd Wars is trying to make this point that by the time these consultant companies come in and the Sweet Baby Inc., uh, the 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 soup is already spoiled by the ingredients. And then companies like Sweet Baby Inc. and especially Sweet Baby Inc. they come in and they spoil it even further. Now, I personally also, and I've made this analogy many times. Yeah, all the companies are woke. That being said, some are more than others, and some are more able and opening to doing more. Some are just doing the bare minimum, and that's sort of what the Sweet Baby Inc. consultants were complaining, that they wish they were there earlier. That being said, it is also clear, the earliest they can get in and ruin everything, oh, they do. Oh, they do. And the more narrative control they get, they take. So the ideal always will be, or idea rather, if there is a studio game company on the edge of a woke cliff, yes, there's stuff that'll bother you, but it won't ruin the game. A sweet baby ink company or any consultation company comes in and just pushes them right over the edge and fills it with every last drop of the message. And the message is, of course, spread everywhere because, like you just saw Larry Fick explain, the firm is you have to you have to echo the ideals of the firm everywhere you look. You have a recurring business stream, and this is this is as old as time. The real question Tale I have is old as time. Great movie. I have is uh, why writing? Why are these game companies going out? and hiring writers. It is the smallest portion of your game team. It is the cheapest part of your budget. It makes no sense to outsource it unless you're after a specific expertise that you do not have in-house. Why would you just hire competent writers to begin with? And what is that expertise that is marketed by Sweet Baby Inc.? It's wokeness. We right. sell wokeness. Why is wokeness valuable to that company? And for that, you got to get into where I was, CEO level game companies, how games are funded, ESG, and why that matters to your credit score and why that helps get your game funded when you can check boxes on hiring firms like this. Here's the meat. Right. It's 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 a it's a level of extortion that goes on at the at the VC level, the funding level. Cabrutus, let me ask, um, what is your like um background before you know before you decided to create this is this something you've been kind of keeping an eye on is this something you've been involved with um or were you just like hey what's going on here and you start asking questions and how, how did you end up where you are now uh, um i was familiar already with spi work i mean i'm and Cabrutus goes on to explain that uh he like all of us started noticing these trends uh and of course, had to do something about it here to go down. Uh, just, of course, is Mark Kernigan talking about ESG. Uh, it's very profitable. There's an entire industry built up around DEI initiatives, consultancy, and su uh, sensitivity reading, which has plagued novels for a long time. I have many writer friends who are basically edged out of their publishing houses and went independent because of stuff like this. It's a very profitable industry, he reiterated. It's financially motivated, and it's as old as time. Of course, consultancy is a very profitable uh, when it comes down here, the real question is uh, why writing? Why are these companies hiring writers? And for that, you get to get into where I was in CEO uh, level game companies, how games are funded, ESG, and why that matters to your credit score, and why that helps you get your game funded when you can check boxes on hiring firms like this. It's not just more than that. He goes, more importantly, it's about vindictiveness. Uh, yeah, okay. Later in the interview, while discussing Sweet Baby Inc.'s involvement with uh, Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League and how the game likely lost <laughs> Warner Brothers upwards of $100 million, Kern said, it's not that gamers are upset about, oh, hey, we have some diversity in the game. It's actually the way they go about it with pure tokenism, with phoning in weak characters instead of creating strong new characters. 100%. And it's also destroying the legacy ones, which, and he says, and more importantly, it's about a vindictiveness to destroy the past, to destroy the IP, to ignore the source material and to tear apart these beloved characters in some sort of fitful rage that we don't understand that is very disingenuous, he continued. And I think that uh, is the tremendous reaction to Suicide Squad. And it is. And you can tell that these people hate us. That's the truth of it. Uh, he then shared his opinion on how this will affect the ways games are financed. It's going to have an immense financial impact. The way games are funded. 
You do not use your own money. Even EA games are hugely expensive to make. They are upwards of 250, sometimes 600 million for certain live uh, games. It's incredible how expensive they are. And to do that, your CFO is your best friend, Kern explained. You're counting on your CFO to get your tax breaks, to put studios in regions which are financially favorable, and you will borrow the cheap money. You will get cheap money to do it. And that's what ESG is. It's cheap money, even though you have to sell your soul to get it. He continued, even EA does this. I worked with EA. We were putting together a deal where they were talking about bailout money from the banks in the last financial crisis that we had. And they were applying that cheap towards games. Same thing with COOF money. They're applying that cheap money towards games. And what has been the cheapest money with interest rates were still low, while interest rates were still low a couple of years ago? It was ESG financing. And so they're going to take this money and they're going to put it into games. However, Kern notes that this landscape is changing. But now that they don't have that money anymore because ESG is either being diminished, and it is, or being rebranded, and it is. It's coming back. It's coming back in a new and improved packaging because they realized we caught on. Uh, because the returns on investment have been so poor because go woke, go broke. That's a thing. On Wall Street for ESG funds at the source of that revenue is drying up. This woke machine cannot continue in the way that it is now for AAA gaming. However, he believes it may be too late for many studios that brought in. And we've seen this for a lot of companies. The ship is too big, too weighed down by the absolute infiltration of the woke mind virus. It cannot course correct. And as he says here, unfortunately, it's so entrenched that you're not going to see much of an ability to course correct because the studios are so infected, they are going to shut down. And uh, this is truly a rise of double A gaming. And yeah, here we go. We've seen it as fan, some fans calling it S tier, but <clears throat> Hell Divers, Pal World, and the last Epic, which I don't know what that is, but I'll just look at that. I do know about Pal World, and I'm playing the hell out of Hell Divers. Uh, really incredible success stories in a period where game companies are experiencing significant losses. And that's no hyperbole. The bleeding will continue until morale improves. No, the bleeding will continue and no one's going to wake up from it. Unfortunately, it's going to be a total nosedive. Yeah, and I believe that is 100% true. 100% true. So that was former team lead for World of Warcraft's Mark Kern. He's a veteran game developer and team lead. He knows all about it. Said what me knew, but gave uh, a little bit of a focus of that's why. Video games are very expensive. They take a long time to make. Uh, I mean, even <clears throat> Sweet Baby Inc. trying to say, oh, we barely came on at the end of the, the, the development cycles. Right, but you still worked on it for over a year. So, yeah, one year out of three, but a lot of damage can be done, as we've seen. Let me know what you think of this. Do you think you have a better understanding of exactly what uh, ESG is, uh, at least in this application of it? Or did you know it all along? And just not good news for the gaming industry. Not good news at all. But maybe they're just too big, and uh, there's no such thing as too big to fail in the gaming industry. And uh, most of those studios we loved, we lost a long time ago. All those veteran developers that made all the games we love, uh, they went off and made their own companies. So the Rocksteadies, the Bioware, the even the Naughty Dog and the Insomniac, those weren't the original companies that we all knew and loved. So that. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments. Make sure to like, share, and sub. If you've done that, thank you. If you're going to do that, thank you. And uh, shout out to the Badger Legion. Well, bye.